Marnen! Marnen! Welcome to the India Explained podcast, recorded in London and San Francisco. One take, unscripted, no rehearsal. Hey, Banti, what's up? All well, Rohit, all well. Um, it's been a good Saturday today in London. Uh, just did a, a bit of uh, cooking. Uh, today I made some kebabs. Uh, so, uh, eaten that, it worked out well. So, all's well. How are things with you? Oh, excellent. Uh, just hanging at home. Uh, just catching up on some loose ends and, you know, planning to just uh, spend the evening listening to records, a uh, little bit of Lego making with my son. Uh, you know, it's it's enjoyable. When we were growing up in India, Legos were uh, tremendously sought after. They were this very valuable kind of currency. So, uh, you know, in some ways, I'm, I think, fulfilling, uh, you know, those uh, leftover ambitions from childhood. Uh, so, yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, all good. And then just catching up on the news. Um, and uh, there's a story that you sent me, which is um, quite a peculiar story. It's about Bilaspur women complain of theft of toilets. Again, it's from the Indian Express. We've done a few stories from the Express. This was published uh, May 11th. So it was just published um, a couple of days ago. Um, the theft, word theft is in quotes. Toilets have gone quote unquote missing from a house in Chhattisgarh village and a woman and a daughter want a bewildered police to trace them fast. And uh, the larger context to this, of course, is that the toilets were promised under, they were proposed under Modi's uh, pet initiative of uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. So, right. yeah, this is uh, quite bewildering. Yeah, I, I think this story has lots of possibilities. I mean, not giving a shit. Uh, is is one possibility that we could run with or uh, you know uh, running toilets right. uh, running to the toilet uh, is is another one but i think this the, the the serious one is basically what's happened is money set aside to uh, provide toilets in homes in bilaspur have been basically like we did the story on rats where rats drank alcohol uh, all um, gazillion liters of it. Over here, what's happened is toilets have been built on paper, but not in reality. Right. 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 So this is basically a toilet scam, shit scam, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's, right. it's, it's got the making of that. Right. That women, uh, and you know, they've been, they, it's been designed for people living below the poverty line. Hmm. They'd submit, the people had submitted an application to the village panchayat for their house they were all the kind of different types of paperwork had happened but even after 18 to 12 months nothing happened so then a local activist hmm. and i think this is a real activist a person called surendra patel hmm. uh, and a shout out goes to mr patel sought the information on the status of the toilets in amarpur through the right to information query hmm. um and that's where things start uh, coming, be, uh, falling down, because toilets have been built on paper and not on the ground. So, so someone has collected uh, money for this. Someone has been paid by the yeah. government for work that they have not done. They have not spent a money, a penny of their money, on uh, either the materials or the construction, labor-wise. Uh, but someone has siphoned money off and been paid and made made you know a sort of a killing. I want to say. Uh, of the government probably because uh, you know they, this is not just one or two toilets that whoever got the contract must have got it for uh, building a sizable number of toilets. Correct, and I think uh, we we've got a lot of illustrations of stuff like this in India where uh, you know the fodder scam was one thing. So this is not a particular party or a particular um, type of politician in power who does this. I think what we can definitely call out is. If there is a particular regime claiming that they are above this kind of stuff, that isn't clearly the case. Uh, uh, this is a flagship campaign of the current government. And uh, clearly, something has gone wrong. Uh, right. People right. who needed to have toilets built um, haven't had them. Somebody's taken the money. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, we can make a lot of shit jokes, but I, I think no. the, it, it, it's it's a bit serious. Right. I think um, we don't want to belittle this right, because right, there's things right. like privacy, dignity, women's rights, uh, a whole host of things that was paid lip service to um, 
uh, I think a couple of years ago, uh, have just gone down the, uh, the I don't want to say it, but they've gone down the toilet bowl. So um, that's what's happened, Rohit. So that's why I thought it was worth us talking about this uh, yeah. story. Absolutely. And I'll have two responses. I mean, the first is a little tangential, but, you know, uh, it was a friend of mine who mentioned this, a friend from college years. He had, uh, you know, gone on a trip to Europe and I think he was slumming around Europe. So he was living in various hostels, right? Um, sort of doing it uh, on a shoestring budget, sleeping uh, in McDonald's, often bathing in McDonald's. But I think at some point of time, he was actually in one of those hostels, youth hostels, where, right. uh, you know, it's uh, four or five guys are, uh, people are in a room, uh, beds next to each other are bunk beds, and every set of four or five such rooms shares one bathroom. And, you know, he said that there was another guy he met there uh, who was quite an interesting character, someone who apparently, he was an accountant who had made money doing accounts for some drug dealer. So he was traveling internationally thanks to the money he had earned but that guy went to the bathroom to take a leak and you know he came back and he told this friend of mine he said you know there's no toilet seat and the question he asked is what kind of a bastard steals a toilet seat you know so (laughs) (laughs) so you know that question has sort of stuck with me right because it's a comment about a certain kind of human being and the same thing here you know, uh, like what kind of person deprives someone of, of, of something as fundamental as this, right? Or or medicine or life-saving medicine or, you know, as in the case of what Lalu Prasad was convicted of, you know, and food meant for basic food meant for animals, which, you know, people who are really at, at the bottom of the of the uh, the economic pyramid, so to speak, would, would need to, you know, sustain their livelihood. So that's one thought that comes to mind. The second thought is, you know, I, I read this line as per preliminary information, Bela and Chanda, both willows, widows belonging to the below poverty line category, uh, live yeah. in two different parts of their house. So, you know, these are people who are really the, you know, they're, they're sort of abjectly poor. And the thought that crossed my mind is that, you know, no matter how sad or miserable or wretched a situation you can imagine, India will come up with a reality that is below that. And, uh, you know, if I may just take a second more, this reminded me of something that happened in school. Uh, you know, in our eighth standard, you remember we had to write these formal letters, different kinds of letters. Uh, yeah. We were taught, you know, when to use yours truly, when to use yours sincerely. So we had to write right. an official letter applying for a job, right? And it was right. just that, you know, maybe you could apply for a job in the summer, get some training. It was, you know, leading up to preparing us for the ICSC. Now, I had right. a right. classmate called Rupesh Mulchandani. So Rupesh Mulchandani wrote a story, and in the story it was that, you know, dear sir, uh, you know, applying for a job, can you please, you know, help me? My father has lost his job, you know. Uh, my mother is now working as a maid servant in four homes. Uh, the situation is very bad. We have even pawned the family utensils, okay? Tomorrow we are going to sell our fan. So the teacher told him that, you know, boss, I just asked you to apply for a regular job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rupesh... <laughs> Take it easy, man. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't no, no, but, 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 but you, you raise a very interesting point. I, mean, I know we are segging, uh, segueing in another direction. Right. Hijinks emotionality in, in, right. in India. You know, you, you look at uh, some of the commercials that are going on. What is There was recently a commercial about wicks, uh, right, right. as in the throat lodgings. Yeah? Right. And the centerpiece of that story was a girl who has been brought up by a transgendered person. Right. right, right very right. noble story. Great story. Right, right. But it, the the emotional kind of dalda that was put on it was right. like holy. So and I think you know there's no problem with that. You know, Indian people in general, uh, we have an emotional setting and right. we right. use that in every. But what is very odd is when you are corresponding with colleagues in other parts of the world. Right. Right. Uh, obviously, there's, and we can talk about this whole kind of false American emotionality, which is, you know, how how are you? How's your family? With, where there is kind of that's a standard question to which there's a standard answer. Nobody expects anything more than that, right? Right. right. In in Britain also, there are certain polit. Uh, how was the weekend? Uh, when you start going into, you know, actually, when the, when I was first asked these questions, like how was your weekend? I'd go on a detailed blow by blow account of how my weekend was, and then I realized two years into my stay in this country that actually what people were saying, expecting was it was fine and how was yours right right and emotionally you're not equipped to deal with those things so i think uh, your friend's letter 
uh, kind of is a gateway into another episode, perhaps, about right. you know, how everything we do involves high emotion. Absolutely, yeah. I'll just sort of respond very quickly. Yes, you know, and I have to say that the ad that you mentioned, it kind of tugged at my heartstrings as well, because, you know, I'm also a product of the same society. And it was done quite well. It's made by, I think, Neeraj Ghayawan, who's the director of a fantastic film called Masan. Uh, it's a marvelously acted film uh, all around. But you're right that the reception to the ad focused more on the emotional and affective power rather than on really the very important message about uh, gender rights, about sexual rights that I think the ad brought out in a very sophisticated and, and non-cheesy way. And the point I was making again is that, you know, to me, uh, it seemed tangential, but, you know, why Rupesh was wrote that letter is that's the first thing that came to mind because we've just grown up hearing so many of these stories that I think they're always there in our subconscious. Uh, the second point is that sad as Rupesh's story was, nobody died in that story. You can probably find that very story in a much darker version happening in reality, right? So Rupesh, Correct. imagine this is the most dire scenario, but there are people for whom a 10 times more dire scenario is actually the reality. Uh, so, yeah, I think Rupesh was very offended because he thought he had come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought Rupesh, the best bit of the letter was pawning the utensils. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I think no. <laughs> that, that, that was legend level. Because, yeah, yeah, you know, my, shoe, yeah. The... my shoes have, like, you know, holes in them so that one rupee coin can fit in and all. A teacher was just the, going the, back there, Mr. Matthew. The, 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 I have to mention this Monty Python sketch yeah. that is there where, you know, they competitively talk about how poor they were. Like, you grew up on the streets. I lived on the streets or whatever it was, you know, right. you had, you know, you lived, you lived on the streets. There was luxury. I lived under the stairs. Oh, you know, what, what, <laughs> and I'm getting the order wrong, but right, it's kind right. of competitive lowness. Right. right. Uh, but anyway, we but uh, c cut back to the main story that we did, which is about the missing toilets. Yeah. I think one of the things that's thrown into sharp relief is writing a letter. Yeah. Under RTI still gets things noticed. So I think we have to give credit to our democracy that right. there is still room for somebody to lie, write admittedly a legalistic letter. It's not just right. a letter about utensils and, you know, father being jobless. And that uh, sets in motion some kind of publicity, which I hope uh, will um, yield uh, some changes and get these ladies a loo. Right, absolutely. And, you know, it, it should sort of be worth noting here that the Modi government has eviscerated the RTI, the power of the RTI to quite an extent, but I hope they don't roll it back and hopefully... Either they will not do this further, or if we have another government, they will, you know, restore the RTI to what it was originally meant to be. So I think we are a little over time, Bunty. Maybe this is a good uh, moment to wrap it up. Yes, uh, uh, to democracy, to transparency, and to accountability. Okay. Right. Shalom. Take care, man. Shalom. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.